night was mighty dark so you could hardly see for the moon refused to shine couple sitting underneath the willow tree for love they find little maid was kind of afraid of darkness so she said i guess i'll go you got here. Yes. Hope we can hang on to it. Tom Rogers and I were getting a nice start until the big freeze came last winter. Caught Tom out on the range. I lost my partner and every head of stock that we owned. You always did play in tough luck. Why don't you pull out? Well, we've still got some of the finest grazing land in Wyoming. We? Yes. Roy Rogers and myself. It's Tom's son. He took over his share in the partnership. Oh, so that's the setup. What brings you here, Jackson? The scenery. Come over to the door a minute. Look at that. Ain't that beautiful? Nature sure is wonderful. Only one gate through that whole mountain range. One measly little pass that a dozen rustlers could hold against an army of sheriffs and cattlemen. Could go around. Let them. It's more than a hundred miles either way. By the time they got there, we'd have the cattle sold down south and they couldn't prove a thing against us. What do you say? You and me got along once, and we could again. Deal me out. Think it over. Your place is mighty close to that path. Rogers and me haven't any cattle to lose, Jackson. No? I seen several hundred head as I drove up. Not ours. We're pasturing them for a banker in town. So, get run with a blood-sucking banker, but I'm not good enough for you, eh? I ought to take every head of your stock. I never did you any harm, Jackson? No, and I don't aim that you should. I didn't come here on no social call. I came here on business, and I mean business. Your place ain't only close to that pass, it's too close. And I don't figure to have you or your new partner sitting at my back when I'm out tending the business, taking a few steers. So you come in with me, or you'll never do anything else. The answer is still no. It's no, is it? Come on, 
around. There's torches in the fireplace. Set those bars in closet, blazing before that Rogers kid and his gang get back. That Rogers kid is back. Get him out of here. I'm coming back. Do you hear? Jackson's coming back. And the whole T-Town Valley won't be a fit place to live in. And if you try to get the wolf out of his hole, you'll die in that mountain pass. Jackson's hole. That's it. Jackson's hole. Gentlemen, as you all know, the outstanding thing about this epidemic of cattle rustling is the fact that Jackson, the man we suspect of being the outlaw leader, always seems to know when and where to strike. Someone has been keeping him informed of the activities of this association and its members. You have demanded that I run this informer down. So I have called you together to make a report that involves the honesty of one of our most respected members. Mr. Brower. Is it true that you and Jackson used to be partners? Well, yes, it's quite true. We were partners, but it was on a legitimate ranch. Uh, years ago, and when Jackson went after easy money, I quit him. It doesn't look like it. Now, see here, Brower. The one chance you have to save yourself is to help us get the evidence we need to convict Jackson. Why, how can I? I've had nothing to do with Jackson. I don't know of anything that would help you. I'm innocent of the charge you're bringing against me. I, I give you my word, I am. The fact that you were Jackson's partner is more convincing than your word. As far as I'm concerned, I'm taking my cattle away from you tomorrow. You might as well take the ranch. Don't do this thing to me, Sheldon. You know I can't pay my taxes without your business. Kind of jumpy, ain't you? What's booked you, Roy? Figures had the fidgets all evening. I'm worried, Jim. What for? There's one herd that's safe. Nobody knows we moved them in here but us and the owners. I know all that. But the smartest horse I ever had is trying to tell me there's something wrong. That's what's frightening them. Storm coming up over the mountain. And the herd's getting nervous, too. I'll help quiet them down. The man in the moon is a cowhand. He's the boss of the range up there. He's night herding all the stars that are shining from afar. The man in the moon is a cowhand. When you see a star go straying through the heaven, you can bet he'll swing his faithful lariat. Every night he rides a trail while the coyotes in their wail. The man in the moon is a cowhand. I'll leave you alone.
Jackson raided it. Did you see him? No, but who else would do it? One of you boys rides to town for a doctor. The phone ain't worth it. I'll go. Bring him into his room and I'll have him fixed up in no time. Scotty, you get me some hot water and the rest of you fellas get out from underfoot. Come on. Get, get. Today, every man in the valley will believe I arranged this with Jackson. What do you mean, Milt? What happened at the meeting? Sheldon knew that I used to be Jackson's partner. Everybody thinks I still am. But you can prove they're wrong. I can't prove anything to a jury that have already made up their minds. My hand's worth about five. Hey, Dr. Brady. Uh, wait a minute. I'll see you. Raise you. Oh, Doc, can't you just call him? All right, go ahead. What do y'all care if Jackson just shot one of our men? Who did you say? Well, rustlers. Who else would it be but Jackson? Did he get my cattle? Yes, but what of it? He got our foreman. Come on, we look into this. No use wasting any more men trying to get into that hole. You'll never catch Jackson with the evidence. Why don't we try going after his partner? You mean Mill Brower? Certain. He knew I was taking those cattle away from him tomorrow. After he left the meeting, he had time to let Jackson know, and Jackson swooped down as soon as it was dark. Come on, men. Come in, Dr. Brady. Howdy, folks. Where's the patient? Right this way. Say, you should have seen the excitement when I told him. They ain't been so much running around since the opera house burned down. Half of them running to keep out of the sheriff's posse, and half of them running to get in it. So you told the sheriff? Well, how could I help it with him and the doctor and Homer Sheldon all in the same poker game? What are you going to do, Milt? I'm leaving. Well, you can't do that. You might as well plead guilty as we run away. Well, everyone thinks I'm guilty anyway. Once they get me locked up, there's nothing I could do to help myself or you either, Roy. Well, where could he be going? Going? He's gone. Horses? Well, take mine. Get in the front room and start banging on that piano. Come on, hurry. Where's Dad? I can't tell you now. I'll explain later. What's happened? Is anything wrong? He's gone. He didn't want to meet the sheriff. Why did you let him do a thing like that? Well, he figured he didn't have a chance if he was arrested. How could he think clearly after what's happened to him? Stick around, men, in case he tries to get out the back way. Oh, boy, why did you let him do it? You should have known it was the wrong thing to do. So we've got to give Milt a chance to get away, understand? Just make out we're having a social evening. Howdy, Sheriff. You sure got here quick. I'm sorry about those cattle, sir. I suppose you and the Sheriff want to hear the whole story. That can wait. You can give us a detailed statement later. Where's Milt Brower? Chester, call Mr. Brower. The Sheriff wants him. Go ahead, Chester. You can come back. <laughs> oh, Sheriff, I just fixed this song up today, and I want you to hear it in Spanish. I'm dying to get a nice fella. I'm dying to get a nice bow. And if I can catch the right fella, my heart and my hand I'll be so. I want to be loved in bitterness. I want a young man that can talk, who can treat two ice cream and fried oysters. And take me a nice moonlight walk. Oh, I'm dying. I'm sighing. Mere friendship I ever shall spurn. I'm dying. 
head isn't level That something is wrong with my brain And had she her time to go over She never would marry again That love is a brilliant hued bubble And I like the foolish young dumb <coughs> Had better attend to my lesson And give up such nonsense at once Please, not so much noise Don't you know there's a sick man inside? Would be a bad time for music and singing with Jim Mason lying in there. Unless you needed a lot of noise to cover something. Such as a man riding away from the ranch. Which way is he heading? I don't know. Hmm, I can guess. You want to make a formal charge against Brower? What difference does that make? Everybody knows where he stands now. Why, it's old milk. Hiya, Unc. <laughs> What'll we do with them? Let's take them to Pa. Yeah. Why, well, it's the Jackson brats and the boys coming back from the scouting party. your whistle or do you want to try the beef and bean i can't say so much for the beans but we got the best beef in these here parts <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to get smart when are you going to get tired of grubbing and sweating down there in the valley for a bare living and the right to pay taxes taxes <laughs> <laughs> well i don't pay any taxes up here i collect them yes sir from the entire state You're in the real capital of Wyoming now, and you're talking to the governor. <laughs> <laughs> the place is yours. Move right in. We live like kings and spend like millionaires. <laughs> There's only one thing I want from you, Jackson. That's a chance to get out of here. So, we're not good enough for you, eh? Well, look at yourself. What's all your hard work and respectability got you? Not a dollar or a friend. And now you're going to lose your ranch. You're right. On account of you, I'm ruined. And my girl and that boy have lost everything they owned. Jackson, I won't forget what you've done. And I'll never forget that you're not fit to live. Up here in the hole, I decide who's fit to live. As long as you're here, you better remember that. Here, drink up, boys. There's no work tomorrow. We're all knocking off to celebrate the 4th of July. <laughs>
from the Rogers Ranch. Well, I wouldn't think so, the way things have been going with Milt Brower. Come on, it'll be all right. We promised. Won't you please listen to me? I know what you've been hearing about my daddy, but it isn't true. I thought maybe you might talk to your men folks about it. Yeah, honey, we don't blame you. Don't you feel bad? That's right. But it wouldn't be any use talking to the men. I wouldn't be mad at Roy if I was you. He done everything he could to keep your pappy from running away. I heard him. Everything's gonna be all right. It's bound to work out, Clara. Everybody I've talked to is so set against us. Well, they just haven't had time to think yet. After a while, we'll be able to prove we had nothing to do with it. build a cabin out here on the range like my daddy put up for his girl just a little cabin you'd never exchange for the home of a duke or a Shake roof to keep rain and worries away. Let me build a cabin out here on the range, just a place for our dreams to come true. A door of jackals that will open up wide just to let the world know that it's welcome inside let me build a cabin out here on the range just a place for our dreams to come to hello rogers well, howdy, Sheriff. I've been looking for you. What is this? A uh, reader restraint. It's to prevent you from selling anything on your ranch until that claim of mine is settled. Look who's here. <laughs> when the table is spread and the women are at their best, that's when Jackson appears. <laughs> Howdy, Sheriff. Mighty nice of you to invite everybody to the picnic. Me and my boys sure appreciate this. I ought to arrest you, Jackson. On what ground? You got any legal evidence against me? No. Well, then I wouldn't do anything about it. Unless you want some shooting with all these women and children around here. Hi, Rogers. Your old partner sent his regards. He's with me now. You ought to come up. And bring your gal. I'd like to see her up there, too. How would you like to take a walk with me, Jackson? There's something I'd like to talk over with you. Right now, I'm hungry. Anytime you want to see me, you come up to the hole. I'll be up that way pretty soon. Hunting. Hunting what? Rats. You never find anything else hiding in holes. Come on, folks. What's keeping us? Let's see. Come on, boys. Come on, dig in. Dig in there. Help yourselves, boys. Come here. Just a minute, everybody. 
Now, as soon as eating's over, we're going to have a turkey shoot. And if you boys think you're a dead shot, why, you're invited over and try it. That's great. Me and the boys is tired of beef anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Come did I ever hit in my life. <laughs> Roy, you next. Step aside, Shag. I'm going to show you how this is done. Well, it looks like it's up to Jackson to show him. That's what always happens when Jackson rubs his eye. Still set on hunting up in the hole, Rogers? You Jackson's all through now? Roy, he don't have to rub his eye. Well, anyhow, the man who hits his mark first usually wins. I used to be so happy when I lived a single life. You pestered me both night and day to say I'd be your wife. I used to beg for just one kiss to make my poor heart glad. You said I'd like to eat you up. And now I wish I had. <laughs> I'm telling you what, I've got you on the spot right now. I'm petting the dogs in little old dog house now. <laughs> you told that old tale once too much, but now I'm wise and you're in Dutch. And now Dog Biscuit is my fare, but I've got company I don't care. There's a welcome on the mat, but I ain't a waiting at the door. That same old key don't open for me anymore. You've got to find a new place to hang your hat. I'm even getting friendly with the old tomcat. Putting on, on the dog, dog in the well-known doghouse now. You know, uh, Lily, after a few remarks like that, I ought to know why some people call a woman a bird. Why? Because you're always chirping, that's why. <laughs> you know, I thought maybe it's because they sometimes pick up a worm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you what, you're really in the doghouse now. I'm petting the dogs in the little old doghouse now. I'm keeping my distance, boy and how. I'm feeding him with a slingshot now. You've got me walking on all fours from creeping through these doghouse doors. You're going to the bow wow, buddy, and no mistake. I've let myself in for more than I can say. Got your number and you got to pay. But every little dog has to have his day. Putting on the dog in the well-known doghouse now. Jackson? You don't need to. He'll take it if you don't stop him. That sounds funny coming from a partner of a man. Oh, I'm getting tired of hearing that. Bill Breyer played on the square with you men, and they will come when you'll admit it. Whoever's been informing Jackson is still doing it, and I think he's right here among us. That's a strong statement, Rogers. Well, maybe it is, but I think I can prove it. I'm going to need your help, Sheriff. I came here today to ask you men to be on hand when I call on you. Before I agree to that, I want to know what I'm letting myself in for. Well, if I told you my plan here, Jackson would know it by tomorrow. I think Roy's using good judgment in keeping his plan to himself. Let's wait. Wait? I say send the women and children home and fight it out with Jackson now. Who wants to fight it out with Jackson? I just couldn't leave you, gents, without thanking you for your hospitality. Hey, by the way, Sheldon, here's a little matter of business I'd like to take up with you. And any time you need any beef, come up to Jackson's hole. <laughs> what do you think this is? An application for membership in the Teton Valley Cattlemen's Association.
Jackson will turn the cattle over to you on presentation of that paper. You're to drive them to La Junta. When you get there, wire me, and I'll send you instructions where to ship. I understand. How about a cash advance? I mean, the boys need a little ready money. Maybe I can give you a chance to earn it. What do you want done? There's a young fellow named Rogers. Yeah, I know him. He's pretty smart. In fact, he knows more than he ought to. Well, what's it worth in advance? I ought to meet Rogers alone somewhere. Maybe I can arrange that. Get me the Rogers Brower Ranch. Hello. Uh, no, sir, he ain't here. He just left for town to see the sheriff. Thank you. He's on his way in now. You'll meet him on the road. We've got a job to do. supposed to get here at all. I met three men on the way in who had it in mind to kill me. The meeting wasn't accidental either. Do you know who they were? Two of them got away. The third's waiting for the corner at Cutstone Canyon. Here's his identification. Looks like this man had just got paid for something. Paid in advance, I'd say. If you want to lead to who paid him, take a look at that folded paper. I've seen this paper before. Where? At the picnic. Jackson handed it to Sheldon. He said it was an application for the Cattlemen's Association. It sure looks like Sheldon could have run down the informer right in his own office. They're partners. They needed our ranch because it's a gateway to the hole. Between them, they arranged for Jackson to steal Sheldon's cattle from us. So Sheldon could claim the ranch for damages. And Milt would get the blame for being the informer. I believe you're right. But we can't convict a respected citizen on appearances. We've got to have evidence. All right. I was going to lay a trap for Jackson anyway. We'll just make it big enough to catch both of them. You're pretty confident, Roy. But Jackson alone has been more than we could catch so far. Why don't we take a tip from Jackson? You mean catch him in his own trap? Well, what would happen if Jackson should come hurrying home to the hole with a bunch of stolen steers and find the pass bristling with your rifles? We'd have to move in while he was out. And how are we going to know when he's making a raid? When you go to catch a wolf, you bait the trap, don't you? I see. Now, here's how I figure we can catch the wolf and the coyote has been running with him. Suppose you should go to the bank. Morning, Mr. Sheldon. 
You got that money for me? I don't think there'll be any objection to making this loan. But I'd better be prepared to tell the directors what you wanted the money for. What for cattle? Some of the best grass in Wyoming is going to waste up there, Cedar Flats. Take care of my horse, Unc. <laughs> now that's the Sheldon brand. And this is what we'll make out of it. An eight bar. Hammer out the branding irons, Hank. Okay. Don't turn your horses out on the range, boys. In a few nights, we ride again. Roy, what are you doing? Oh, just cleaning my guns. I wouldn't be worrying if I were you. Well, it's sweet of you to try to keep me from worrying. But I'd rather know what you're going to do for Dad. All I can say is we're trying to clear him and get the cattle back. Is there anything I can do to help? No, Clara, there's nothing you can do. Just keep your chin up. I've got to be going now. again. You won't need me. You better come anyway. It's my herd he's after, but it's your money.
provide us that rope breaks. That rope's guaranteed. If it breaks, he can take it back and get another one. Don't give up easy. Could be worse. No, I'm all right. I'm all right, Roy. Just a shoulder.
Well, I suppose now that Jackson Hole is cleaned up, I ought to congratulate the head of the Cattlemen's Association. Well, thank you, Sheriff. We got the informer too, Mr. Sheldon. Why, this is preposterous. That's what I said when Roy accused you. But I took his advice. You're the only man but ourselves who knew I intended to put those cattle up on Cedar Flats. Sheldon, you convicted yourself. Get along. Me and mine. 